even reverse course. This is a new study. It was published Monday in the journal Nature Geoscience, and its authors, who are based in Beijing, took a very close look at the seismic waves from earthquakes that have passed through our planet's course since the 1960s, and that is how they were able to calculate the speed at which the inner core is spinning. Are you confused? I am. We're going to get to understand this a little bit better with our guest. Let's bring in Michio Kaku, who is a professor of theoretical physics at the City University of New York. Professor, good morning. Thank you. Morning. Glad to be on. What does this mean? Well, at first it sounds like something from a Hollywood movie. Right. The script is, oh my God, the core of the Earth is spinning backwards. I mean, this is worse than having a tsunami or an earthquake. The stability of what you walk on is at stake. Now, this report comes not from Hollywood. It comes from reputable scientists at Beijing University that analyze echoes. When an earthquake takes place, shock waves go reverberating around the inside of the Earth. And by analyzing these echoes with computers, you can recreate a model of the inside of the Earth. And sure enough, the core seems to be about to spin backwards. Okay, but I read that this happens every 70 years, so we don't need to be alarmed? That's right. The bad news is that we know very little about the core of the Earth, very little about what's underneath our feet. The good news is probably there's nothing to worry about in the sense that roughly every 70 years or so, we're not sure, the, uh, the, the center of the Earth does seem to go backwards. If this is the core, this is the crust of the Earth that we live on, yes. this is the core of the Earth, the core could move independently of the crust. That's the key. So the part we're on never moves in reverse. Yeah, so the, the, the core of the Earth sits in a pool of like molasses, and it's able to spin independently of the crust of the Earth. So in other words, don't lose any sleep over this. Probably it's a natural <laughs> cycle. It takes place probably once every 70 years or okay. so. But we need more data because this is new territory for us. Yeah, why do we need to know? I mean, they spent a lot of time, they studied earthquakes back to the 60s. Why is it important to know more about this? What are the implications? The implications are potentially enormous because think of continental drift. Sure. Why are the continents moving away from each other? What is driving it? And also uh, earthquakes, uh, the whole nature of the stability of the planet itself. We know very little about what's underneath our feet. Mm -hmm. And that's why this information from, from echoes Computer analyze is very important because it tells us the future of the Earth. What questions, finally, Professor, does this leave you with? Well, it leaves me with the, the frustration that it's under our feet. It's just you can, you can almost touch it, but it is thousands of miles distant, and we really don't know that much about our home. We know more about other planets than we do about the oh, center that's of so the Earth. interesting. Like Mars, for example, is probably frozen over, not much earthquake activity at all. So we know a fair amount about Mars. We know very little about the Earth because the Earth is dynamic. Things are moving and churning at the mm -hmm. center of the Earth. That's why we have earthquakes. That's why we have continental drift and volcanoes. Yeah, volcanoes, my son's favorite thing. Oh. <laughs> he likes to make it with baking soda and vinegar in the kitchen these days. <laughs> right. Thank you, Professor. I now understand it much better. We appreciate it.